them guys in Austin known as Rooster T. Started posting a podcast each and every week starring Bernie, Jeff, Joel, and Gus. They sit right down and begin to discuss whatever they want. Maybe sometimes wow or the current events that are happening now. They product place to make some bank, but that's what they do because they're the drunk tank. Drunk tank. How do I suddenly feel like we're in a strip club? Dude, that guy sounds kind of like a white sir mix a lot. Can you identify the beat bed? That's what I want to know. No. I can. Well, what, what is, is it? it? I'm going to look it up here and see if I can play it for you guys. You know, um, <laughs> I'm really shocked at how many podcast theme songs we're getting that sound just like that. <laughs> it's uh, a lot of aspiring young rappers yeah, out there. A lot of a lot of young M and M's out there. Who apparently. who was that? Oh shit! I closed it. Was it Teresa Bach? No, it was not Teresa Bach. It was Dark Crad fourteen. Dark that was, Crad. That must be Crad? his username on our website. You the, don't think his name is Dark Crad walking around on the street? <laughs> 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 no, no, I don't think his parents named him that. His girlfriend's name is Blonde One Five Zero Four too. She's re- and she's really a dude. <laughs> yeah, she's, really a, she's really a middle-aged fat dude. That unless I miss my guess, that beat bed was from Beck's Loser. Was it? I think so. Hmm. It was, it's some Beck song, I think for sure. Interesting. But that's where he pulled that from. Where did you learn the term beat bed? <laughs> you know, that's a really good question. I don't know where I learned the term. Did you just bed. invent it? Because I've never heard of it until you just now. No. I could use a rhythm blanket in my beat bed. <laughs> Fuck it, I'm I'm down, yo. <laughs> I think I heard the term beat bed from uh... Are your days in the street in Houston <laughs> <laughs> when you were popping and locking for change. <laughs> I used to work. I used to work for Dre back in the day. When he was in a dance what, gang. Was that your your manager's name at Blimpies? Dre. <laughs> <laughs> back then he was Mr. Dre. He wasn't a doctor yet. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember there was some Eminem song where he made fun of uh, Christina Aguilera? Yes. Okay. There was a hoax response to that where she used the term beat bed. This fake Christina Aguilera came back at Eminem with a song. And it talked about how he would be shit without Dre's beat beds. Hmm. I see. So so I'm... (laughs) I'm literally referencing a fake Christina Aguilera. <laughs> that's where I get. That's where I get all my street I don't cred. Think, I don't think that's an appropriate reference for Wikipedia. I don't that's, think a uh, fake, still... fake Christina Aguilera qualifies. <laughs> still more, more legitimate than anything Gus and I got. Yeah. Um, hey, speaking of that, you know what? What's my that? fucking Wikipedia page got deleted. Did it? Yeah. Let's not talk about that. You got... I got I got rolled into Rooster. Now, when you search for my name, you just get redirected to uh, Rooster T. Do you well, think? That's... How do you know that? Were you spending some time Wikipedia in yourself? My wife likes looking at my Wikipedia page for some reason. <laughs> that's so weird. But why would you want a Wikipedia page? No, frankly, I don't she's care. got to psych, yeah. her, she's got to psych herself up for sex. She's like, hey, just remember, he's famous. He's got a Wikipedia page. He's got a Wikipedia maybe, page. Maybe... Just take off the bra. I can do this. Maybe that's uh... why I ever got laid recently. Hmm. <laughs> She needs to check your references first. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, I like him okay, but let's see some ci- proper citation. <laughs> oh, man. Did, uh, does my celebrity diverticulitis status still exist? No, they removed all the... <laughs> they, they removed all the celebrity cases of diverticulitis because they realized that it doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> oh, Dude, you, were, you were listed as a celebrity case? It was like... I, I added him It was in. me and Sonny Bono. <laughs> like, there, were, there were a bunch of people and I thought, Jeff's got this, I should put him in here. So I put him in there. Then someone put citation needed. So then for my citation, I put the comic where Jeff gets sick. <laughs> <laughs> and they accepted it. <laughs> The fart comic? Yeah, that was it. Good <laughs> lord. Celebrity illness pages. That's the best thing that ever happened to Wikipedia. And then uh, it got it got deleted like six months ago, I think. They got they just got rid of all the celebrity cases on the diverticulitis page. That's too bad. I was on there with some pretty awesome There people. was like a car dealer from LA, yeah. like a used car salesman, who was on there, and then he got deleted, and the note was like, not really a celebrity. <laughs> That's funny. I was like, wow, they left Jeff in, but they took down this other dude. Those Wikipedia moderators can be harsh. Yeah, there, there was there was, there was one guy in particular who was uh who was on me for a while for uh trying to get that citation. I don't remember what his name was. I'll have to look it up. I'll put it in the link dump. How do you get that job as a Wikipedia moderator? Free time? Is there like a quiz or something? <laughs> I mean, what's the qualifications to be a Wikipedia moderator? And correct me if I'm wrong, isn't the whole point of Wikipedia to not have moderators that this is a globally modified <laughs> Yeah. Database? Yeah, but you gotta have some people in there checking to make sure that people aren't just going around defacing everything. Like the time Jason and I got drunk and put that you like to suck dicks on your Wikipedia page. <laughs> Do you know? Okay. That was only up for like two that minutes. Was up, that was up for like two minutes. 
<laughs> do you know that? You, have you ever heard the whole saga of how I got Bernie dot com? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But please, this, this is a great story. I've... There, there was. Uh, there's a city in Tasmania, which is a. It's, it's Tasmania part of Australia. Or is it old yes, country? It's, it's like a state. After once referring Province. to New Zealand as part of Australia, I have learned to be cautious about <laughs> saying what is part of Australia and what is not. And anyway, Bernie Tasmania is a city in Tasmania, and it's spelled exactly like my name, B-U-R-N-I-E. Well, I registered Bernie.com a very long time ago. And in fact, I had to get it from a domain squatter. I had to wait till it expired and snag it. Like, literally waited for a week, it expired, and I grabbed it. So about a month later, the city of Bernie Tasmania started to contact me, and they wanted the website. And I we went through this whole kind of funny thing where I was talking with someone in the uh, mayor's office, and they said they wanted it, and I made these outrageous demands like, I will give it to you. I will redirect all the web traffic. I will give it to you as long as you will have a parade in my honor, and I get to march in the front of the parade, <laughs> and you build a statue of me, which I'll pay for, but you have to put it up in a park somewhere <laughs> where it's me, and I have an outstretched in, I have a can of Foster's, and tucked under my arm, I have a platypus, <laughs> and I get to make up the inscription for why I have a statue. And then they just didn't respond to that. They wouldn't come <laughs> oh, back. Man. Anything. So, so I found out though I was looking through the old me- emails trying to like kind of keep this going. And I saw they said, "Well, we at least modify it to something less offensive." And I said, "Less offensive? I don't have I don't have anything up on that web page. Just a blank page." Gus had modified it, and, <laughs> and for two months it said, "Bernie sucks cock." And, and so, <laughs> so if you were <laughs> So if you lived in the city of Bernie, Tasmania, <laughs> you got this horrible message every time you logged on to Bernie.com. When, when did you do that? It was back when we worked at uh, at, the, at the call center. Uh, I think it was Bernie had done something to one of my domains, and I got mad, and I had root on our web host. So I just changed Bernie.com to that. Was that back in the, like, when he was fucking with Show Me the Monkey? Back yeah. In those days? yeah. Okay. Oh, that was funny, though. That was funny. <laughs> your your little vandalism probably cost me my statue with a platypus, man. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't get my platypus. So. Well, well, well I'm, I'm very sorry to hear that you didn't get your, your statue. I just use it for mail, you know, because I, I wanted to have a static email address that was still personalized that mm-hmm. I realized, like, back in the late 90s that... Stuff like Hotmail or, you know, Gmail didn't exist at the time. That All that stuff was eventually going to go away. So I wanted to have a more permanent email address. Mm-hmm. So I established Bernie.com. So what was Bernie.com before you had it? It was just a site, a park domain site. Which Can, can anyone explain how, the, how those work on a business model level? Like, if you just park a popular name... And it's just a page of just random links, which is what I see most often, that are related to the name of the site. How do they make money from that? I don't know. How does anyone make money advertising on the internet? Probably just, you know, fractions of a penny every time. But people can't possibly be paying. Like, I want to go after this part domain eyeballs, you I'm, know? Well, yeah, I'm sure it's just, you know, people buying ads in bulk and just throwing them out wherever. Any place they can serve them. But it's just a list of links. It's not even like an advertisement. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, you know, whether... I don't know if you've seen it, but there's uh, some very uh, some very sexy ads on RooterTeeth.com. <laughs> I heard that another another Jeff is a celebrity thing. He's on some it's list on, of gamer celebrities. Yeah, mygamercard.net. And uh, I, by the way, I don't know how I got on that. I had nothing to do with it. What, what sure, rank are you on there now? Are you in the twenties? I'm in the twenties somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> At one point, it was your goal to get number one, right? I was. I got, a, I got as high as sixteen, and then I fell down. Oh, you don't know how you got on there, but all of a sudden, you know how high you were. And no, I know. You had a I goal mean, to get to number one. I know uh, that it, once I found out I was on there, I was like, if I'm going to be on here, I'm going to be the fucking uh, okay. top dog, right? But no, nowhere near. I also want to point out that Jeff is like, why do you care? What do you? What, what difference does it make? Jeff heard a major Nelson podcast where they mentioned one time. That there's a list of the most viewed gamer tags, and that he was like number eight on the list. Fuck yeah, it was Jeff went he 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 put his gamer card everywhere <laughs> it's true, that you yeah. could possibly put it, like on our front page. And he went up so quickly that they just stopped putting out the list. Or do they still put it out? now? <laughs> I haven't seen it in a long time. Jeff ruined it for everybody. I'd like to, to think so. Had to game the system. Who was up at I number like one? Game the system, but uh, it was like Major Nelson or. I don't know, E or oh, right. Soldier Boy or one of those people. What, Major Nelson put out a list where he was top of the list? That seems, <laughs> that seems odd to me. <laughs> and cut that out. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so... Uh... Speaking of Major Nelson, we'll be, seeing, we'll be seeing him in two days, by the way. <laughs> At the event that he was so nice Fuck, to uh, invite us to. I'm shocked. 
So you want to talk about PAX since we're going to PAX? Oh, shit, that's tomorrow, isn't it? Yeah, Gus and I are going to put... And you, too, are going to put fucking 4 a.m. tomorrow to fly to PAX. Is that the way that's going to work? Yeah. yeah our, right. our flight's at 6. Since, and since Jeff and I are neighbors, I get to give him a ride tomorrow. Oh, really? Speaking, speaking of neighbors, before we get into PAX... <laughs> I want, let's talk about what your life is like since you bought a house, for a little bit. It's, it's been pretty miserable. I don't want to go through the whole rigmarole. It's, oh, please do. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't have enough podcasts. the highlight of my day if you go through that. But let's talk about the two but, things yeah, yeah, that happened yeah. to you yesterday. So, um, you know, after I moved out of my old house, uh, you know, my wife doesn't drive. I should start with that. <laughs> Can we talk about that, please? And why doesn't your wife drive? She doesn't like to drive. So she chooses not to. Yeah, she chooses not to. She well, that's license, fair enough. But uh, she doesn't. She In doesn't Gus's defense, she's Asian. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably doing you all a favor by keeping her off the road. <laughs> but <laughs> dude, that's no joke. Your other Asian girlfriend <laughs> from ten years ago. I rode in the car with her one time. She rode the wrong way over. A, <laughs> She rode in the wrong lane over a bridge with oncoming traffic coming at us. That was it, and uh, I was like, you've got to do it. We're going to die. And she was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Everything's uh, fine. It was on Riverside, right? Yeah. It's funny. Anyway, okay. So <laughs> I just like she's perpetuating. Is there some reason why she won't drive? I have a suspicion there's something sinister here. No, she, she says that she doesn't like to drive. And... I can't make her drive. <laughs> so is she, does she have an ability to drive? Yeah, she can totally drive. I've seen her do it. That's she's a fair not, point. That, that's no problem for me. She's yeah. So she's not perpetuating the myth that Asian women can't drive. No, no, no. <laughs> she can't. She's totally perpetuating What did that it. note, that secret note you wrote say, always, Ben? I couldn't I, read it. You said don't mention something? I said that you didn't introduce yourself. Oh, oh we didn't introduce didn't ourselves. Hey, oh, look Jeff. at us. We're getting notes from Mr. Fucking First Time Sitting in the Room. <laughs> uh, I'm Felicia Day. Oh, uh, then I'm Bernie Burns. I'm Felicia Gay. Oh. Okay, let's get back to this. Yeah. Um, and let's get Vino over there. Yeah. So. Um, Is that the first time you've opened your fucking mouth this podcast? Hey. No, he's talked a couple times. All right. Let, let, us, let us talk. So, uh, you know, my car has been acting up, and does, the AC is broken in it. So when my mom found out that the, my AC was broken, she lent me one of her cars, and I've been driving that around. So I had two cars, and I'm the only one that can drive in my house. We moved out of my old house, and this created a problem. So I had to leave my car with the broken AC at the old house, and it, and uh, I've been driving this other car with AC. So last night, I said, before PAX, got to go get the, the, the car. That was the second time. You, you should go back. <laughs> I don't want to this, this story will take forever. Okay. But anyway, so I said, I got to go get the, the car that's broke that, with no AC at my old house. So I called Jeff. I was like, come with me. We'll get the car. So he's like, okay. We go down there. The car's been egged. <laughs> <laughs> Your car got egged? Yeah, there's like it egg shells. seriously I egged. Mean, like, someone <laughs> put like 18 eggs on my car. Because this thing, it, was, it had an omelet on it. <laughs> so bad. It's like my car was sunny side up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I'm like, what the fuck is this? And like, there's eggshells. And we're like, oh, my car got egged. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but was it just your car? Like, yeah, someone, just my car. someone had gone and bought eggs to put on your car. Yeah. Now, why do you think they egged your car? Probably because it's been sitting there for three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> really? Just sitting there? Was it parked like? I, I moved it from one side of the street to the other once. <laughs> but, okay, uh, apparently that wasn't enough but, yeah. uh, to so, save off an egging. So we get down there. The car won't start because the battery's dead. So I've got one of those... <laughs> So I got one of those chargers you plug into like the cigarette lighters of each car and it, it charges it up. That can't work. It, it, it worked. That's how I moved the car last time. <laughs> it was dead and I, I did, I tried, we tried to jump it. We couldn't jump it. So I bought that charger. It worked. I moved it to the side of the street. So I bought, you know, put it out there. Couldn't start it. So I'm like, motherfucker, what the hell's going on? Um, so I've got, I don't know. I've got to go buy a new battery. I, I didn't do it. I was supposed to do it this morning, but I, I, I can't bring myself to do it. So, I'm so angry. Dude, I'd like to point out though that this is the second time Gus has called me and said, "Hey, help me move this car." And the first time we went out there, well, first off, he picks me up the first time. We go all the way over there, get there. <laughs> Gus realizes I don't have the keys for this car, so we had to drive all the way across town back to his house to get the keys to go all the way back over there to find out the battery was dead. We spent an 20, 30 minutes trying to jump it to no avail. This time when he calls me last night, he goes, "I went and I charged the battery last week. I promise it'll work." I'm not not gonna waste your time. I, 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 already, I already charged it. I already moved it. I thought it'll get out there, fucking dead. Why aren't you driving your own car? I don't understand. Because the AC is broken. I, my, I'm, I'm driving the car my mom let me. And it's been the hottest year in the history of Austin. Oh, okay, okay. I'm sorry. I got stuck in the house thing with the AC thing. Okay, so you're not driving your car because your AC's busted, right? And you're what kind of car are you driving with your mom's car? Uh, it's a Chevy Cobalt. <laughs> what? I'm 31 years old and I'm driving my mother's car, which is it. it I mean, how much damage did it do to your car? Because, I mean, is it okay? Because you have a nice car. No. No. <laughs> not anymore. Not, no, uh, not, that, so nice. not as of yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened? How much damage was done to this thing? No, I mean, there's really no damage. It's just covered in an egg. So <laughs> what, It's just a little yokey. <laughs> so what is your mom driving? She's got, my mom has tons of cars, apparently. <laughs> oh, okay. How many? Okay. I don't know, but enough to give me one. So, okay. So, anyway. Um, 
the other day on on uh, Saturday, I got um, I got a bill from the gas company, <laughs> and I thought this is weird. I just got a bill the other day. Why am I getting another bill? So I opened up this new bill, and it says final bill. You know, oh, good. Balance no, negative no, negative twenty eight dollars. No more bills. And I thought, well, that's weird. I, I that shouldn't be my final bill. So I called the gas company, and their phone system's down, so they can't take my call. And this is for your new house, right? So I thought, oh, okay, I'll just call them on Monday. So I got home on Monday, and I checked my mail, and there was a check from the gas company for Uh-oh. $28. And I thought, oh, shit, something's going wrong. <clears throat> so I call the gas company, and uh, they say, oh, yeah, yeah, well, your service has been canceled. And I said, why? They said, oh, a new tenant activated service at, at that address. Uh-oh. And I said, new tenant? I bought this house two months ago. And I said, who, who activated service at this address? And they said, sorry, sir, you know, we can't tell you because of privacy. And I, on a hunch, I said... And I, I'm, I'm going to change her name. But I said, is it Peggy? And Peggy being the previous owner of the house. And they said, yes, that is the name of the person who activated service. And I said, what are you, what's going on here? And they said, well, on August 19th, Peggy called. And she said she wanted to activate service at this address, effective August 24th. And I said, well, I'm still living here. I bought this house from her two months ago. And they said, well, sorry, sir. And I said, well, I need to get my name back on the... On the account, I need this to be mine. She still holds the gas rights to the house. Yeah, <laughs> and then they said, "Okay, well, we'll just need to charge you a ten dollars installation fee, and we can get it switched back over to your name." And I said, "No, you're not going to charge me a ten dollars installation fee." And they said, "Well, it's just it's a standard fee, sir." I know. I said, "I know it's a standard fee. I paid it already." It's a non <laughs> it's a non standard disconnection. Yeah, I said, "I paid it already. You can't charge me to re to reconnect it again." They said, "I can't do anything about it, sir." I said, "Okay." I want to cancel everyone's gas on my street. <laughs> and they said, what? I said, apparently anyone can cancel anyone's gas. So I'm canceling everyone's gas. And they said, uh, hold on, sir. What would you have done if this had worked? <laughs> Your neighbors would all hate you. They'd be like, sir, that's an excellent point. We'll get right on that. So they put me on, un- <laughs> they put me on hold for like 10 minutes. And they come back and they go, yeah, you don't need to pay the fee, sir. <laughs> what the fucking... That's ridiculous. So did you find out why this Peggy lady is no, going after your gas? No. So I, 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 I called... Uh, I, 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 I called my realtor because I know she's still in contact with that other woman because I have no way to contact her. And I said, can you call her and ask what the fuck is going on? Yeah? What'd they say? I, have no, I don't know. I, I, hopefully I'll find out today. Fuck that. I, well, we won't get too far into it, but was it a good purchase? Yeah, the sale went fine. Okay. No hiccups, no problems. I seem to recall there was a story about you showing up to move in and the lady was having second thoughts no. after closing. No, that was that me. Was Jeff. Oh, that was you. Yeah, that was when... Griffin came to move in nine months pregnant, and the lady took one look at Griffin and kicked her out of the house and said she couldn't. She had to come back in two hours. <laughs> I can't. She'd been in the house for like twenty years or something yeah, like that. And she started, and then like she came in a little bit later. She kept coming into the house after we closed. It was weird. But uh, Griffin was painting the living room wall, and the lady just burst into tears and ran out. <laughs> 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 uh, she's crying. <laughs> wow. That. Luckily, she didn't know about the old gas trick. She just shut, <laughs> you, she just shut you. The best up. part about that is, if you would have done nothing, Peggy'd be paying for your gas right now. I, I know. Uh, maybe I'm, maybe I'm stupid for calling the gas company, but... dude. So bizarre. I'd see if you could get Peggy to put the electric in her name too. I know. I guess I should call the other utilities and make sure everything's still in my name. Probably not a bad idea. So how come they're not allowed to disclose the name of Peggy? But if you guess her name, they just say, "Oh <laughs> yeah, that was her." They were gonna guess. So technically, you can just keep guessing names until they say, "Oh yeah." Funnily enough, that was her. Well, I mean, that makes sense to me. She's a human. She, she, uh, you obviously know what the problem is, so she thinks she can get to the bottom of the problem because Gus knows the information. So that makes sense to me. It's a flawed system. No, no it's it's a, a, I like. And, and then, and before I hung up, I was like, "Listen, I, like, <laughs> I don't want this to happen again. Can we put like a password on my account or something?" Do you think when they put you on hold to go talk to the manager, it was because they realized that you really could turn off the gas and everybody? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, like, maybe the guy went to work. He's like, secret. "Let's go turn off everyone's gas." And the manager's like, "What the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> So I like that Gav's idea of a more perfect system would be that they turn Gus away without a solution. That's yeah. proper, you know. Oh no, go, it's, it's is that what customer secret. service is like in England. It's a British way of thinking. Yeah. That's, do, that's, you, do you have issues like this in the UK? I mean, you go through this stuff all the time. Well, you live with mummy and daddy, so do they have issues like this? I pay. I pay the bills. Do you? Yeah, my parents don't pay the bills. You got, I, I, you got the skills to pay the bills. Sure. I I've had a lot of trouble with like. I've had a new phone. The, the phone I have now, I've had it for about 18 months, and it's still registered to my old address, and I've called them a bunch of times. And they, at one point, thought somebody else owned the phone, and it's, it's a mess. I don't even get bills for that phone. I have no idea how much I'm paying for my phone bill, because I don't see the bills, and I have no way to access them online. Well, if you don't get bills, you're not paying for it. I'm paying for it. It's direct debit. 
so, so, so you it, can just the, the money the bank. money is getting sucked out of my account every month for like various different amounts and i've i have no way of seeing it unless i check my account it's pretty bad right that's very bad <laughs> that's stupid <laughs> i'm gonna that. get an iphone next congratulations welcome to, the, welcome to the club you you said gus that you were disappointed with the iphone 3gs camera Yes. Over the iPhone 2. It, it doesn't it's seem like the pictures are 3 megapixels. I don't know if there's a setting I need to adjust, but when I take a picture... Are they the exact same size as the previous It's like 800 iPhone? by 600. That's not 3 megapixel, is it? No, we, we did that the day you got it. Yeah. That's the first thing you and I tested was to see the pictures that they're different, and they look exactly the same as my regular old iPhone. Yeah, I mean, I can adjust where it's focusing, and that's cool, I guess, but the pictures don't seem high enough resolution to me. That's very disappointing. The the only reason I never got an iPhone is because of the shite camera on it. Mm. Maybe I should do some more tests. Maybe if I grab them through iTunes, it'll be different. I don't know. Gav's actually got a pretty cool phone because he has yeah, my- a phone that does video and will take it at, like, how many frames per second? Yeah, my phone can shoot at 120 frames a second. So basically three and a half times slow motion. Yeah, depending on power or NTSC. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It, it's uh, You need to do it in a, a lot of light, otherwise it's... Dark. And very useful. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've been out and want to take a slow motion <laughs> video, much less just a regular old video. But uh, it's the with the video on the 3GS is pretty cool, like being able to edit and trim the video down. That's pretty cool, but it is kind of blurry. Like, I don't know if it, I don't know if it adjusts the shutter speed depending on how much light is in the room. Yeah, but it does. It, oh, it does? Mm-hmm. Okay. I guess every, every video I've seen has been in a quite dark room, so Probably. it's blur. It, it's okay, like I said, in, if you have tons of light, like yeah. sunlight. I want to point something out and get away from this boring ass conversation that we just got into. I want to say, and Jeff, you can probably back this up. I <clears throat> already back you up. You get in a dumb situation with uh, some kind of company that you're paying money to, or like some kind of, God forbid, like city organization, where like an ordinance or something like that. I am probably the best friend to have because I will make fun of you for everything except when someone's giving you administrative bullshit, and then I'm completely on your side. <laughs> That's true. Like Jeff went, Jeff, Jeff had went through something with his homeowner association. I'm like, yeah, uh, fuck those people, uh, fuck them all. I hate them because I hate I hate people who have uh, like this minuscule little bit of power via some like bureaucratic horse shit, and they just they they eat your life up with forms and garbage. They could just they just take away hours of your life, and there's nothing you can mm-hmm. do about it. Last week I mentioned that Griffin and I were talking about the maintenance of an American life, and that's it. It's the overhead of just dealing with too many fucking rules, man. Yeah. You know, that's coming up in this discussion of, of health care and everything else, is they're now discussing the possibility of having a national sales tax for everybody. And it's like, oh, that makes sense. You know, uh, you know, you just you pay your tax instead of having, having high income taxes, you just pay a national sales tax. As somebody who owns a business, I don't want to collect and pay another tax for everyone else no, anymore. That. I'm sick of that, Dude, man. Dude, we already do it enough. It's just not – It's people think it's invisible because they're just like, oh, I'm in a cash register and I just pay the tax. Well, there's a lot of effort that goes from that sales tax getting from that Plus, cash register to the government. You're Plus, absolutely we're right We're going to fucking that. end up paying the sales tax and be like, great, everything's good. Let's not lower income taxes after all. Oh, why would they? Then we're, uh, we're fucked. Then we're, then we're all living in California. I also let's pay high property tax. Let's pay high sales tax. Let's pay high income tax. Fuck it. Why not? <laughs> why not? Let's have. St- we're I lucky. Lo- why, why do I need money? I love new. <laughs> <laughs> it's creating problems. I, I got eighteen eggs for free this week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go eat on my car for lunch. I love new homeowner Gus. <laughs> God, I have been so angry for the last three months or so. so. Yeah, it's garbage, man. And then, I, I, and then, speaking of bureaucratic shit, I wasted like an hour on hold when I moved to the new house because I'm trying. I was trying to add. The electricity for the new the, the, that account to the website, you know, the city of Austin, you can pay utilities online. Oh, yeah. I was trying to add it, and it wouldn't work. It asked me for my account number. It asked me for my social security number. It's like, social security number's wrong. So I called, I called, I called. I spent an hour on the phone, and then finally they're like, oh, there's no social security number on your account. It's like, why the fuck isn't there one? You're, I called you and set this up. I called you and set this up. I already had a fucking account. <laughs> I'm sure it actually went like this. Okay, well, let me give that. To you. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Gus, no. Gus is Gus gets angry I, when there's not somebody I, in his face. I've been losing it. Get, I've been losing it. Lately. He can get pissy on the phone. Did you see that um, Shadow Complex is the best-selling single-player uh, Xbox Live arcade game? It's best-playing, best-selling okay. single-player Xbox Live arcade game, which is what the fuck kind is of that a, kind of a dubious yes. uh, honor. You know, because there aren't that many single player games, right? And that's what they said. Well, in the write up I read on Kotaku or Joystick, that's what they said. This Most is like our multiplayer. This is like our show is the hottest new comedy on Thursday nights at seven thirty on yeah. this network. Yeah, yeah. Of, of the new shows this fall. 
Yeah. I mean, it's a great game. Don't get me wrong, but it sold two hundred thousand copies, which seems mm-hmm. too low for how good that game is. Yeah, well, I mean, but it's, it, it's only been out what, two weeks, maybe. But it's like, can you name other single player? Bernie and I tried to do it yesterday. Can you name other single player only arcade games? Uh, the Penny Arcade games. Yeah. Uh, Pac Man CE. Pac Man CE had was that single player? Well, then you could say Pac Man, Miss Pac Man, Pac Man CE. Yeah. But are you considering are you considering single player to be like missing a multiplayer mode? Yes. Because I consider single player to be a game where there's like if there's both, but all the achievements are in single player, I consider that a single player game. No, 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 no. that's still that, multiplayer. That's, that's if there's a multiplayer component, it's like Marble Blast is a multiplayer. Well, there's game. no, there actually is no qualification for it. I guess that's true. So but, we don't yeah. really know wh- where they came up with this. You know, they released it on their own. It would just have to be. It would have to be a game with zero multiplayer. Mm-hmm. It's it's a great it. game, by the way. It's a fantastic game. I when Gus was telling us about it, I was very standoffish about playing a side-scrolling 3D game, but I've actually finished it now, and I have all the achievements in it. I think it's a, I think it's a great game. Yeah, yeah I gotta I catch think, up. I, I think it, it took me like five and a half hours, five hours to finish it, and, and it didn't feel like I played for that long. Oh, yeah? I, it feels like I, I could run through it again. It, it, it's got kind of a weird thing where it's not quite 3D and is not 2D, so it's like it's 2.5D, which <laughs> ends up having... The one thing you don't want in a video game, which it has control issues sometimes, where I, I'm doing what I think should make the guy point at the dude in the background, but it's the opposite direction right. yeah. or something like that. Yeah. And then that's the most frustrating thing in a game. That and the platforming stuff where you're jumping from moving platform to moving platform. I fucking hate hey, platforms. Hey, I've been, uh, I've been meaning to ask you, by the way, you went through and got the minimalist achievement, which is to play through the game only collecting 13% of the items or I less. I did do that. How long did that take you to do? Because when you, you started in the office that night, and it seemed like you got through like a third of the game in 10 minutes. I want to say that took about 2 hours and 12 minutes of game play. I really? now have a run through that game that's an hour and 15 minutes. Hour and 15? And it's just running straight through the game on the lowest mode and not worrying about less collectibles or more collectibles. Right. Just blazing through the game. Was that for an achievement, or is that just something you wanted to do? No, that was something I was... Well, sort of. It was on my way to get the level 50 achievement. And I normally don't grind achievements at all, but I was done with everything else in the game... And I was level 38, and so I was just trying to find a way to get to level 50. And normally, in that case, I just walk away from the game, knowing that DLC will eventually come down the pipe at some point, and that I would just get level 50 during DLC play, which I should have done, but I was having fun. I like the game. It's you're, a shame. You're assuming there will be DLC. I'm, well, if it's you know if it's a top-selling single-player arcade game in the month of November ha, you has, know, during a lunar solstice, I'm sure there will make can DLC Can there be for DLC it. for an Xbox Live arcade game like that? Yeah. Sure, more levels. You can get up to 250 achievement points. Hmm. They can add another 50 in. You know what sucks about that is I just read that uh, DICE has no plans to make any DLC for Battlefield 1943. Yeah, I wouldn't. I, I heard about that. I wouldn't. That's too bad. I'd, I'd, make, I'd make another more, game. Not even more maps or anything? I wouldn't. They're already making another game. They're making Bad Company 2. But I don't know. It, it was kind of like a, a no one-off brainer. kind of a thing anyway. Hmm. Hmm. I, uh, I think I also heard that the PC version of 1943 got pushed to next year. Yeah, that's true. It was supposed to come out September this month, but uh, I guess they said they're having trouble porting the Frostbite engine to the PC. You know, you can do a thing on Xbox Live Arcade where you go to Game Marketplace, go to Arcade, search by all titles, so you get every title. And then you can sort your search by bestsellers, so you can actually see the sales ranks of every game in Xbox Live Arcade. I wish they would do that same thing for DLC or rank DLC in there, because I have a feeling that a lot of these games, especially on Xbox Live Arcade, that offer DLC... I think there's an extremely low take rate on it. I really do. I think there's a low take rate in general on Xbox Live Arcade, but I think DLC is very unpopular on, on arcade games. For arcade-specific games? I mean, I can, I, I can tell you some games that have DLC, and I look for other people having those achievements, and I don't find them. The Maw was one. Um, had a lot of DLC with it. Uh, Marble Blast Ultra has DLC associated with it. And that came out, what, Gavin? Like two and a half years after the game was out, right? Yeah. That Marble but- You've, you've got those achievements now, haven't you? I do. I just got the last one in there. So you have 100% again in Marble Blast. I am now up to 48 completed games. Oh, and Jeff God is damn. here to vindicate me okay. for the discussion last week. Let me do it. What are, we, what are we vindicating? They said last week that if you are counting the number of completed games you have on Xbox Live or Xbox 360, you shouldn't count arcade titles. That's anymore. retarded. 
Thank you. T- that absolutely well, I wasn't, I wasn't 19- saying you shouldn't count them. In- I was saying it should just be a different Yeah, category. because it's a different level and a different amount of time. I don't think it's a different what? level or a different amount of time. I was try- I'm was. i still trying to get a th- 200 points in Battlefield 1943, so I calculated. No. I but- need to get... No, let me talk, dickhead. So <laughs> you have to play... The final achievement I need is to play 100 games of Battlefield 1943. I figured out how much time that takes. That alone takes 24 hours. I, can, I can, can't count on two hands how many thousand point games I've beaten in less than 24 hours. But it's the same with every other, like, billion. a retail game will set achievements over, a, it'll, they'll take you a long time to do. You like, and me, a, f- a few, I'm right here with you, I got you. Let me ask All you right. a question, let me ask you a question. Okay, all right, this is a good point. All right. A retail game will set achievements that will make you play the game a few times over, so it, it takes a long time to do it, and Not you get a sense of, a lot of them, will ha- you'll have a sense of completion, and like, yeah, I've done it after you've got a thousand points. An arcade game will have... A load of shit easy achievements, and then like one. No, that's actually and, and then one that just takes a long time for no reason. I don't know. What, what about I, I, Shadow I, Complex? Shadow Complex makes you play that game through four. Well, times. actually, that, that's I, that's a shame that that game only can have two hundred points because that's a very a very in depth arcade game. Here's the problem with the discussion that we had last week: is that these guys are all saying that they're falling into the trap that it's worth less points, therefore it shouldn't count the same. Right. I went and looked. None of these guys have any arcade no, games. I'm not, yes. saying, I'm not saying they shouldn't count the same. I'm saying they do count the same. There should just be a category. Yeah, where should it's be like different. a line down the middle. It's like retail games here, arcade well, games. I agree with that. Why draw the distinction? Just so you can see, because they're not the same. They I'm are, not say- what, what two types of games are there for Xbox? Retail and arcade. There should be... I mean, come on. No. But what, are you saying you don't agree with that? It's unnecessary. Games if, if, on if, if they were, were, were going to be held on equal footing, why don't, they, why don't arcade games have a thousand points? Why, why are they different? Because people would buy the arcade games in preference over the retail to get more gamer score. Why not? Yes. That's if, why. If, if in your mind they're equal, why why should there be a distinction? They're not an equal price. Mm. I don't know. They're not an equal price because if you're going to get a, th- there's, they're probably protecting the the point scheme of gamer score, which I don't care about at all. But there are some people that do. And if you could buy four games for the price of a retail game and get four thousand points, you can see why people would do that. Yeah. That's why they're worth exactly what they're worth. Is because they're they're a varying price range, but about ten dollars. So you get about an equal number of gamer points for playing these thing or gamer score, whatever that, the hell it's called. That's yeah. retarded. So how come that a game worth four hundred points will get two hundred points of achievements, and a game worth sixteen hundred points Microsoft? You got to use different words. Yeah, so like four hundred Microsoft points to buy will get you two hundred gamer score, yeah. and a game that is six. 1600 Microsoft points will get because you that game that. has been out for two or three years. You could also get on the Best Buy right now and buy a fucking some, some 360 games. game in the bargain bin for eight dollars and true. still get a thousand points. Good point. Oh, That's a fucking burned, argument. fucking burned. Yeah, they go, stuff goes to platinum. Hits. <laughs> and, you see and, how quickly I turn you on can you, go buy, you can go buy the orange box right now at Best Buy for twenty dollars. Go do it right now, Gaff. <laughs> go buy it right go. now. I've already got that game. No, go, go buy another. That's, so, like, D- tw- that's like twenty quids. D- <laughs> DLC, <laughs> DLC for an arcade game will get you fifty extra points, right? Uh, yeah, up to 250, yeah. Or you can put in Halo 3 and go and punch someone in the back three times. That's 50 points. Okay. Right. So your point is the retail game is easier? That's what I think you it's, just it's said. stupid like to pay, said. It's stupid to pay money for such a stupid amount of points. 50 points. Nothing. You see, you, I wouldn't buy DLC paying, for an arcade game are you paying it's only for the, 50 points. Hey, do you see your logic are turning you, on itself? Do you see yeah. what's happening here? What's happened? The Explain. snake eating its own tail. Yeah, you, you, Where fucked, you, going you, with you this? fucked yourself there. You, dig <laughs> that hole, dude. Are you paying for I, achievements or are you paying this, for the fun of playing the additional DLC? This whole conversation is down to the fact that I don't like arcade games. That's pretty much it. That's That was my point I was trying to make last week. These guys don't play them. I don't like arcade games because they're worth nothing. You gotta listen to guys like Jeff and guys like me who have actually played them and beat them. Both of them. I've beat an arcade game. Cloning Clyde. One. I beat it. Was that it, was it easy? Took me like a day, yeah. And how many retail games have you beaten? Three. Is that true? Three? Gavin has 100%ed <laughs> four games. Cloning Clyde and three other games. That's See, it. You're using, you use your benchmark for difficult as your hardest one. Your hardest one in arcade is Cloning Clyde. Your hardest one in retail is Oblivion. That was a very long, difficult. It wasn't one. hard. It was just long. Yeah, very long and difficult. It sucked. That's what she said. Hey. Nope. Nope. And then she egged my car. <laughs> <laughs> no, Whoa! I get it. I get Submarine's it. looking for us. No, it's my my, my laptop it's telling me it's running out of Shall power. Shall we talk about Snow Leopard? Do you want to talk about that at all? <laughs> what do you want to talk? What, why are people so goddamn excited about an OS upgrade? Once I mean, you install it, you'll see if if it works. It's not like a service pack where nothing happens. <laughs> I, I, yeah. had, I had some what a ringing endorsement of the OS. If I had, it works, I had some fucking problems. I had I had four attempts to install that. I could go through each one. It was a different problem each time. I've installed it twice on my desktop and my laptop and had no problems either. This time. is what happened to me. I put the disc in. 
I didn't have enough hard drive space. I had like three gigs and you need five, so I cleared out some space. That's not Apple's problem. Yeah, that's my problem. And then I put the disc in, it started installing. Then it stopped and rebooted and I had two gigs left. So it had installed something, but I didn't know where and I couldn't install it again. So I had to re-delete some more stuff. Then it rebooted and didn't complete the installation because the disc was dirty. And then in the end, I gave up and it spat the disc out. I was like, fuck this, I'm going home. And I opened my laptop again and it had installed. I opened it up and it was like, here's Snow Leopard. I didn't even think it worked, but it did. It took me four goes. With, and it's with, great. It's a speed machine. With me, I was upgrading from Leopard. I put the disc in, double clicked to, you know, to do the install. And uh, it started installing, went through like the progress bar. So it was like the install was like 35% done. Then it said, error. Then it spit the disc out and rebooted. Yeah. And I was like, that's weird. Then uh, my, my laptop wouldn't boot up anymore <laughs> to the desktop. <laughs> so then I had to put the, the disc back in. I tried to, you know, do the upgrade again. It said error again. Spit the disc back out. So then I had to put I, I put the installer back in. I had to use disk utility and format my hard drive. God damn. To totally erase everything. And then I did a fresh install and it worked. And then I had a time machine backup. So I just restored from my time machine backup. So everything worked. So if you reformat your drive and then and then get everything back from a time machine backup, do you actually lose anything? No, I didn't lose anything. So it's just like nothing happened. Mm-hmm. That's like awesome. Right before I did the install, I did one final time machine backup to be safe. Yeah. Which, thank God I did. I'd, I'd have been so how, fucking mad. How do you get the disc out of a MacBook? Because my the disc was stuck in my MacBook for about 20 minutes. I was just there, hitting eject over and over again. Just I was having a conversation, just tapping it. In 20 minutes, it came out. Like, is there a shortcut it. to get it out? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not Tweezers, I, I guess. Tweezers. But uh, but no, ever since but you know my I did have some installation difficulties, but since then it's been it's been great. It's a, a hell of a lot faster. Freed up a ton of disk space. Yeah, I think I got like ten or twelve gigs freed up. Did you really? Yeah. I feel like I lost this space. I don't know how. I'm like the only one. I I swear I had eighty gigs free when I started the install, and now I have seventy two gigs. Was it on your desktop? My laptop. Your laptop. I don't know. I could be wrong about that. I may have misread it, but I was almost positive that's what it that's what I had. So weird. But it doesn't matter because it, it's super fast now. And Safari is fucking a speed demon. It's awesome. Right? Speed demon. Speed demon. You should join us, Bernie. You should upgrade. I have upgraded. I actually installed it. I just don't have anything to say about the OS upgrade. I will say, though, the, the way that Gavin said the disk was dirty, it's kind of hot. <laughs> <laughs> is it okay to say that? No. Say it again. Say it again. Come I'm, on. I'm not saying it. Look at me when you say it, though. Rewind <laughs> the podcast to hear that again. You, you, can, you can be the drunk tank, so uh, hot for words. Say it again. Say it once for me. Say it for the girls in the audience and the girls in this room. Come on. Dirty. <laughs> How is that? <laughs> can you say it with your shirt off? That's for the ladies. <laughs> My shirt is off. Gross. Here, take a drink out of this soda. <laughs> Now say it while you gargle. I want to drink. Gross. I'll be right back. I'm going to drink. I'll take one too. Hey, let's I'll take a big red. Diet Dr. Pepper, please. Let's, let's talk shit about him. When All he right. Gavin, you don't get a drink. Hey, I need a big red. It's the only reason I like being in this country. Uh, are, you, are you the one who's been drinking the big red? Yeah, big red. Uh, I think I had like three of them yesterday. I had one. How far outside of Texas can you get big red? Like, how, how what's its reach? I don't know. Big I- red! We'll have to we'll have to I'll have to ask Wikipedia after this podcast to figure it out. Let's just hope Wiki, let's just hope the Big Red Corporation never pissed off any Wikipedia moderator. <laughs> I wonder what celebrity cases of Big Red are. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, man. Thank you, sir. I, we've already broken Gus's no food rule for me in the in the podcast. Oh, Jesus, I'm you sorry. All, if you're gonna drink, just drink away from the microphone. <laughs> if you think Big Red is food, you actually are becoming an American. Hey, speaking of food, we took Gavin and Ben this weekend to the Salt Lick, which is a very popular, very famous barbecue restaurant southwest of Austin. And Gav ate his body weight in barbecue and then spent the next two days throwing up. I it was ate, awesome. I, the, Gav the ate food, four pounds of barbecue? <laughs> the food was so delicious, I didn't get four. I just kept eating until I could feel the food stopping higher and higher up inside my chest. <laughs> oh my and I was like, I should stop eating. And then Griffin and Jeff both gave me their dessert, so I had a, a pie and some cobbler. Hey, I let think. me answer this question right now. You, Griffin, we had a little fight about it. Griffin had the pecan pie, and I had the blackberry cobbler. Which one was better? They were both equally good. She fucking... You're a sissy. And they the both bla- the came out first. The blackberry cobbler is uh, best out there. It's it's an unbelievable. <laughs> that was funny. I like it. They both came out first. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so I, I threw up a lot to the point where I was completely empty. And then I, I drank a glass of water and had some Pepto-Bismol, which is great, by the way. It tastes great. And then I threw up some pink water. water so. nice. You know, I, I, I once went to the Salt Lake about 10 years ago. <laughs> I remember this. And uh, we were all out there eating and 
for some reason, I was the only person who ate the beans. I don't know why. Beans no, are good. No, no one else wanted to eat the beans. I, ha I had some. And then later that night, I got back to my apartment, and I got really sick. I guess I had food poisoning. And I ran to the bathroom, and I threw up a lot. I remember as I was throwing up, I felt a whole bean, like an unchewed bean, <laughs> come up out of my nose <laughs> and land in the toilet. <laughs> and, and I remember it was the most pleasant throwing up experience I've ever had because, like, the barbecue sauce was so good that, like, it still tasted good coming back up. <laughs> Fucking A, dude. This is worse than the uh, <laughs> death video segment you had to cut last week. Now, he was so excited about it, he called me, like, 10 minutes later and was like, I think I've got food poisoning. I'm so sick. I shit a bean out my nose. <laughs> it was delicious. Yeah, like, the, the, the bathroom smelled fantastic. It smelled like the barbecue sauce. And, like, it, the toilet looked like the barbecue sauce. It was good awesome. Good lord, <laughs> yeah, dude. I was gonna... <laughs> I was going to say, but because none of the food I ate had actually reached my stomach yet, it was just untouched. Like, in the night, I woke up and threw up in one of my t-shirts, because I, oh, I, I, uh, I stay up in Jeff's loft in his little outhouse, and there's no bathroom in there, so I was like, shit, I'm going to throw up. I don't want to throw up on the bed or on the carpet, so I grabbed a t-shirt and climbed down the ladder as, as I was throwing up into this t-shirt, threw it outside. In the morning, I went to like go and clean it off. It was just mashed potato. It looked like <laughs> just someone had put mashed potato in one of my t-shirts. <laughs> All right. <laughs> wow. Bernie is mortified. Yeah, he looks, I'm, uh, this is worse than the discussion we had a few weeks ago about all the nerdy lightsaber stuff. Hey, I think Bernie's just upset that we've been wasting food. Let me ask you a question, Pukes. <laughs> perfectly good food to be thrown on the ground. All right, you're recovering. What, uh, what was the best thing at Salt Lake? The problem is Discounting the dessert. The, the problem sauce. is this, now that yeah. I just made, now that I just laughed at a, a joke that Gus made at the end of that, now he'll keep the whole fucking segment in. Yeah. Just to get to that one. His joke. validation. Yeah. <laughs> he won't be able to give it up. Or he'll include just a joke with no reference to any previous conversation. <laughs> hey, when you edit the podcast, you can do what you want. It's true. I'll do it. Why do you say mashed potato and not mashed potato? Potato? I don't know. You tomato. Say, so you would say mashed tomatoes? Well, I wouldn't say tomato, because that, that just sounds weird, right? Coming from me. But you say potato? Potato. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, it's all falling apart. I'm fucking inconsistent. Are you even British? Lies are coming out. Aluminium. Why do you say aluminum? You spell it aluminum, right? Yeah. Sometimes. Do you spell it sodium or we do you spell, spell it spell sodium? The, we spell the... Potassium or potassium? How, how do they all work? Al aluminum ends in N-U-M. Sodium ends in I-U-M, you idiot. Oh. So does aluminum oh. ends in I-U-M. Aluminium. Uh, yeah, no. You know, he's right. The element is, is aluminium. But what we use, um, like aluminum foil, it's actually oh, spelled Oh, that aluminum. makes sense. Sorry, Gus, I was wrong. What you have makes more sense. That's getting Jeez. cut from the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> cut any references of me being right about anything? <laughs> yeah, as long as you laugh at his joke, he'll leave the part about him being wrong. <laughs> hey, so should we get back and actually talk about PAX? We were going to do that like oh, an hour ago. Yeah. Well, maybe we should talk about, since we're on topics of news and vomiting and all that stuff, maybe we should talk about <laughs> Disney buying Marvel first. Oh, we can definitely talk about that. Since that's kind of a... So Disney bought Marvel. What do you think about that? You know, I was thinking about that last night before I went to bed. And Four billion dollars. I think Marvel should have got more money. I think Disney yeah, should have paid more. Yeah, I think Disney got a fucking good deal, right? Yeah, because I was Four thinking... Four billion I was like, dollars. I was like, well, you know... As I started in my head trying to think about it. Iron Man came out last year and made, what, over $300 million. Spider-Man? Like, well, just, just going off of that. You know, 12 $300 million movies, they made their money back. It's kind of weird, though, because... Marvel then also, they have separate deals where they publish all that through, like, Paramount makes the lion's share of, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what is it, Iron Man, right? Right. Sony gets all the Spider-Man money, mm -hmm. and I think Warner Brothers is X-Men? X-Men is through someone else as well. And so they already have all these deals in place. They were talking about an NPR yesterday, that Disney won't immediately see the benefits of all those, because they're going to have to wait till all those deals can be restructured until they can, all, like, all the A material has already right. been licensed out to other distribution methods. I mean, they'll still get some money because Marvel will still get their cut, but it's not like, it's not the immediate slam dunk right. that you think it is. I mean, but they're, they're going to have that. They'll also have, you know, video game sales as well. Oh, absolutely, man. Marvel's video game sales do, do really well. I don't know if anyone still buys them, but they might have comic sales as well. Somewhere <laughs> in that I think, mix. I think the comics for Marvel are just an incubator for, like, to figure out which video game and movie to make at this point, really. Mm -hmm. And that's where they make all their cash. Yeah. I, th I think, uh, I think Disney got a good deal. I think they, 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 they that, that company should have been worth a lot more. Yeah, I agree. What do you think, Bernie? Well, I'm curious now how much of, like, what percentage of the modern American characters does Disney now own? Fuck, it's a lot, right? I mean, if you if you take Disney, and they have Pixar, and now they have Marvel, is it 
is it overestimating to say they have about forty percent of the original modern day American characters? I, I hmm. I don't know. I mean, so Marvel has five thousand characters in their lineup. That's a lot. Like, well, There's many, a lot of crap yeah. in there too, but yeah. I mean, they basically have every superhero that anyone gives a shit about, except for Batman and Superman. But here's here's what I keep coming back to when I think about it. It sounds cool because we all know the name Disney, and we all mm-hmm. know the name Marvel. But like, what's your best vision for what's going to come out of this? Like a Pixar Avengers movie? That doesn't even sound right. No, I think that I, I don't. I don't know that you'll see anything new come out of it. What I what I read was that essentially uh, Marvel's going to benefit just from Disney's global reach and be able to expand into other markets and then Disney will just benefit by that on the other end but I don't, I don't know that you'll see a lot of like I don't think you're going to see Peter Pan and Iron Man team up well or anything. here's here's something else to think about like if they I don't think they'll take Marvel into a younger direction but remember at Comic Con we saw that like that game based on that cartoon that's coming out, yeah, with like all the Marvel, like the small Marvel superheroes living in mm-hmm. the superhero city, and all the villains living in the villain city next door, and that was awesome. Buy. I, I wonder if we'll see more stuff like that now. We that, might, you know, with Disney trying to skew to a younger audience. Also, I guess a big reason why Disney bought Marvel is that the one area that they lack in is like the teenage male audience. They've got girls locked down with all the fairy shit, and then like the Jonas Brothers and Hannah Montana. Oh, you're talking about Disney and all that. But yeah, Disney doesn't Disney doesn't have a good in with young boys, and uh, well, that sounded kind of creepy. Yeah, whoa. but uh, hey, Gavino, say but dirty. this is gonna give them that. You know? <laughs> Don't do it. Well, I, you know, I, when you say stuff like Marvel's gonna benefit from Disney's global reach, I keep hearing stuff like that, and I just. I just want to say, hasn't anybody heard of the goddamn internet no, at this I know. point? Uh-huh. Like, if Iron Man was going to be popular in Japan, wouldn't they have picked him up by now? I guess it's just distribution deals. I don't know. Is that what it is? Yeah. I mean, I get I get frustrated by that. Like, I, I, I've been reading online. I read a lot of other people who make online content. And there was somebody who made the weirdest statement. Uh, just kind of threw it out there in a blog or, or Twitter or something like that, where they said, I just wrapped up shooting my new web series pilot. Uh, I think it's going to be good. I hope they like it. It's like, what the hell is a web series pilot? And who is they? Yeah, and yeah. Who, you're shooting a pilot to show it to someone before you put it on the internet. It's something I just don't understand about this generation of content producers on the internet. Is why are people trying to take the one thing that's incredible about the internet, which is a flat world where you can distribute to anybody, and they're they're trying to get jobs on sites, you know, that to to get productions done. It makes no sense. It makes no sense at all. It's like taking what doesn't work about the old system and trying to layer it over the top of the internet. It makes no sense at all. It makes yeah. no sense. It's like these um, people who get agents. There's now web agents. Do you know that? Yes, I do know that. <laughs> what the hell is that? What do they do? <laughs> I don't know. They like broker a domain name deal for you, or what's going on? It's no. It's it's confusing as hell. They'll broker a good banner ad for you. Punch a monkey or something. Is that what it is? Are these, are these agents selling ads and doing that kind of stuff? I, I, I don't. I don't know, but I would assume it's ads. You think so? Yeah. I mean, what else, what the fuck else are they doing? I'm gonna. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. We allow a look behind the curtain. It ain't that hard to do this stuff. Yeah. Like the parts that yeah, I, I think, like what you're saying, like people shoot pilots and they want to show someone. I yeah. think it's they don't know how to make a website or like they don't want they want to have more than like a YouTube page and they're like, oh, we'll just you know. Hand it over to I, the IGN network or some other big conglomerate. Let them worry about all that stuff. Am I crazy to say that's the easy part? Serving video is not the hardest part of the equation. Not anymore. Yep. The hardest part of the equation is making something that people want to watch. You know, telling people about it or buying a an banner ad or selling a banner ad, if that's the way you want to support your thing, that's not the hard part at all. I don't understand it. I, 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 I guess maybe I don't think we're geniuses, you know, and we're able to do that stuff. I mean, I see people with, with stuff on YouTube and stuff on iTunes. That's a good way to get it out there. But, you know, how about you build a goddamn web page? Maybe we don't understand because we don't have a web agent. I think, uh, <laughs> I think we're all just old school. I think we've all just been using the Internet way longer than most people. Yeah. And I think we're all just a lot more comfortable with it. Come on. The now. Internet's a very different place than it was when we started Red vs. Blue. Or when we started all our dumb websites like Drunk Gamers and Ugly Internet. I guess so. I guess, yeah, I guess everyone now makes a, no one makes a homepage, everybody makes a MySpace entry, you know, or, a, mm-hmm. or, or MySpace or Facebook. Yeah. No, <laughs> what, are the, what are the kids using these days? I don't even know. I'm MySpace? Out, I'm even outdated on, on the outdated stuff. Yeah. I guess, uh, I guess if, you know, somebody can make a homepage on Twitter. So, I've had Twitter now for about, you convinced me to, to sign up, I've had it for about eight weeks, I think I've made ten tweets <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> I've discovered the only reason to have Twitter is for shit my dad says. 
It's pretty funny. It's God, fucking it's funny. Fucking hilarious. And I watch that dude's. I watch that dude's. He gets like another forty thousand followers a day. I need. I need to follow that guy. He's They're really funny. funny. If any. If any of you guys have uh, not checked it out, you should definitely go look at it. Well, that's what I mean. That's Thank what's you. really cool about anything that gets big on the internet is to see how people start to use it as its own performance space. Mm-hmm. That's to me. That's fun. You know, like when people had web pages. And then we'd start to see like crazy web pages going up. Like, do you remember Bonsai Kitties? Oh yeah, yeah or Bonsai, Bonsai Kittens? Kitten. Yep. God, that was a great site. Um, and you just don't see stuff like that very much anymore, true. you know? Yeah, yeah. And so it's cool to see like uh, a feed on Twitter, like shit my dad says, because it's just it's it's entertaining unto itself. Yep. You know, it's not people telling you constantly how entertaining they are. So uh, fuck, I brought the conversation. <laughs> yeah. How this happen? So we got packs coming up. The event runs Friday to Sunday. We'll be in booth 3012, which is, I believe is in the parking lot. 3012. <laughs> okay, so at PAX, are any of you guys on panels at PAX? Just the Rooster Teeth one. And that is what time? 6 p.m. Saturday. And for the, the PAX panel, we've got three videos to show? We definitely have two done, and we're working on a third one. Yeah. We, yeah. We haven't, we haven't locked it down 100% yet. So, and they're all very cool videos. <laughs> are they? I think so. Awesome. I think so. Well, you know the the live action one we're showing. Yeah, I do. I'm yeah. excited about that one. Yeah, and then we got an episode of Red vs. Blue, which should be exciting. Let's hope so. If Gavin can get off his ass and finish it. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> Stop it. And then another uh, another special video. Uh, last year was the was the PAX was the first place we showed the RVB animated project. Yes, so, indeed. Which is an ever ongoing development. Yes, it's a longer, much longer process to do stuff for television than it is for the web. I don't think we're going to show animated again at PAX, are we? Since we, we might, we might just have it playing at playing the booth. booth. Yeah, yeah, if you guys yeah. want, if they hadn't seen it, they can come by the booth and see the animated uh, concept piece that we did. We can't really show anything else right now, but we can show the concept piece because that's been cleared. But everything else, I don't know. Maybe we'll talk to our web agent and see what he has <laughs> to say about that. So what PAX is this? Is this the sixth PAX? What happened? What happened? Uh, well, seriously, what, what we, had happened? A, we were having a great <laughs> podcast going on here, and then everything just fell apart. <laughs> what, uh, what happened? Every, all of a sudden, nobody's got anything to talk about. Hey, this is the sixth PAX, Gus. That's what you were about to say, right? Yeah. Is We've it? been to every single PAX. Yeah, yeah. What was yeah, your we, favorite we, we so far? We have been to every PAX. I think my favorite was the last one in Maidenbauer, which I think was PAX number three. Yeah. Uh, because it was so fucking crowded, <laughs> like you couldn't move anywhere. And that's that's the year that they had uh, the ball, and they have the all hail ball shirt because of it. Oh yeah, I don't know if anybody saw that besides me. I don't I, know what I don't know what the ball or all hail ball is. Where, I like the you know, Main Bauer had like on that bottom floor was kind of open. Yeah, and uh, everyone was sitting there. I guess like everyone was waiting for a concert, and like no one could move because it was so crowded. And then someone just dropped like a beach ball from the top floor, and uh, that was ball. Oh, everyone start, started chanting "All Hail Ball!" Wow, I, I must have missed that part of <laughs> Pax folklore. It was it was really weird. I think the first one might be my favorite, just because that was when the the hall stayed open twenty four hours and kids were just asleep everywhere, all over the place, and, and stealing bags. <laughs> Jesus, that was, that was nuts. The, the problem with that is that is where I set my mind that Pax is the stinkiest con that we go to. Oh man, because that first year, really nobody went, nobody left, and so people really started to smell. Right. The uh, the gaming rooms with the PCs were the worst. Like, because they would like you would walk back over there in that direction in the main bar, and it's like I don't know. There wasn't ventilation or air wasn't circulating <laughs> back there, and then people had been sitting there because it was open twenty four hours. People would not move from those seats, and it fucking stank back Gross. there. Gross. You but couldn't get within fifty feet of the door without smelling it. It was pretty bad. They fixed that shit real fast, though. You don't have st- yeah, that, stink problems anymore. Not a problem anymore. Yeah. Nope. Not they're, they're sold out this year. They sold out? Yeah, you cannot get a badge for PAX. How, how many t- badges did they sell? Do, I don't know. Do you know? I don't know. What it, was the attendance last year? It was 58,000, I think? 58,500 was the official attendance? I, I don't remember, but I think this year they expanded the space that they're using over yeah. last year as well. Like, now they're using the entire convention center, and they still sold out. They, so, sold, they sold out this past weekend. Is this the first year to sell out? No, no. it sold out at Maidenbau. It's the first year to sell out at the new location. Okay. Wow. It just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So, what do the Penny Arcade guys actually do at PAX? They have panels. Is that is that they it? roll around on giant mountains of money? Yeah. No, Gabe and Tycho are amazing in front of a crowd. It's like a weird skill that they have that they don't really get to showcase that often. But if you watch them at like Child's Play for the auction or any of their panels at at uh, excuse me at PAX, they are unbelievably eloquent in front of a crowd. Funny. Yeah, they're uh they're whenever they do the charity dinner auctions, they're they're always fucking on fire. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's really amazing. And then uh, we should go to Child's Play dinner again this year because we haven't been for like the last two years. At least I haven't been for the Let's last go. two years. So, all right, 
Gus booked the plane tickets. We're going. Seattle, here we come. See you there. So are there any exclusives at PAX, gaming-wise? Um, they're gonna, it'll, I think it'll be the first time that you'll be able to ha- to see Knights of the Old Republic. No, not Knights of the Old Republic. Star Wars The Old Republic. <laughs> Star Wars The Old Republic. Uh, the new, a new Left 4 Dead map is going to be shown there. Left 4 Dead 2. Uh, Left 4 Dead 2 map. It's going to be shown there. Um, I don't know what other exclusives are going on. There's a bunch of other stuff, though, I think. Yeah, there's a bunch of other stuff. Like, there'll be StarCraft 2 playable. Um Last year, Bethesda had that awesome Fallout setup with the trailer and God, all that the... so cool. Yeah, all the dummies. Yeah, and you could go inside and play Fallout last year before it came out. There, there'll be tons of great. games that you can play before you know, they came out. It's just... It's cool. That's you think really Mass cool. Effect 2 will be there? I don't know. Well, if they're showing the Old Republic, you'd think they would show Mass Effect 2, right? That's coming. That has a launch date. That's coming out way sooner. Uh, you know, I started playing Mass Effect, uh, again, just because I want to finish it before Mass Effect 2 comes out. I don't know anything about that storyline at all. Are you enjoying it? It's okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to be. I'm, I'm early on, and you know, I I kind of bash Shadow Complex and Fallout Three when I had just started playing them, and uh, I don't want to make that same mistake again with uh, Mass Effect. But I'm getting into it. It's taking a little bit more time. So did you not? Did you play it before and then stop, or is this the first time you're going through it? I have played it before and stopped. I had to restart because I didn't remember anything about Mass Effect. I've watched people play that, and it looks. Hu- which is the biggest game on Xbox? Like physically, the biggest area. Obl- in a game. Oblivion. I think. Well, I think yeah. we just talked about one where they had the biggest environment ever. Got a Guinness Book of World Record for yeah, it, didn't well, they? That was Fuel. Dr- Fuel, yeah. was that it? Fuel, yeah. It was a racing game. But that was, I don't know if it was the biggest environment or biggest racing environment. I can't remember. But Oblivion is supposedly twice as big as Fallout 3. And yeah. Fallout 3 is fucking huge. So how long, huge. how long would it take to walk from the furthest edges of Oblivion? Has anyone done that? Uh, you tell us. You played the game. I don't, I don't remember anything about the game. I can tell I you that miserable. in Fuel, there's an achievement to get from the top left corner of the map to the bottom right corner, and then another one to get from the top right corner to the bottom left corner, and they estimate that that takes like two to three hours of driving. Oh my god. Forget about it. You gotta do it continuously? <laughs> yeah. You mean you have to sit there and do it? Yeah, you have to sit there and do it. You gotta drive. Wow. You get from point A to point B. Wow, I'm it's not kinda, doing it. It's kind of a cool achievement, but I don't know. I don't know if I like that. I wonder how, how long do you think it would take to walk in Fallout, Bernie, from like the same thing, from the far upper left of the map to the far lower right. Man, I don't know. it take a good long while. Uh, they built in the fast travel into that game. I really don't know. I would say probably an hour and a half to walk it. Hmm. I guess. I don't know. You'd be fighting the whole way through, too. You know, I didn't find out. It's very subtle, but I didn't find out until much later in Fallout 3 that if you lower your weapon, you move a lot faster. Yes. And it's it, you can't really tell, really, but it makes a big difference. Really? Mm-hmm. I didn't know you could even lower your weapon. No. Yeah. You hit X. Huh. It's a blue button. Man, I can't wait for you to go back to England. You can find out. So I can start playing Fallout again. I love Xbox. the fact that Jeff figures out how to play a game constantly after he's finished. Like, the other day, we beat Gears of War 1 on Insane. And afterwards, Jeff was like, well, what, what were you doing just then? And I was like, it's blind firing. It's when you're behind cover and you just pull the trigger and you just lean the gun over and shoot. And Seriously. Like, I didn't know you could do that. I, I I've, I've never found blind Why, firing to yeah. be helpful in the game. I tell you Why what, would you ever do it? I tell you what, the last shot on General Ram, I blind fire sniped him in the face. And it killed him. How cool is that? With a torque bow. It was pretty impressive. Wow. It is true that I can't believe that actually happened to you again, because that happens it all the time It happens a lot. It happened in Crackdown when you didn't know you could lock on. Because people. I'm impatient, and I don't like to go through tutorials or fucking... So you, you end up in, playing the game for the, twice as long because you don't have to do it. In his yeah. defense, Bernie did not know how to fire more than once in Fallout 3. That's yeah, true, that's true. And you were like level 10 or 11 before you discovered that. Yeah, you'll notice I was level 10 or 11, not level 50, <laughs> <laughs> where I usually find out stuff like that. that and that changed the game. And, uh, you know, I, I was like, God, I can't believe I'm such a fucking idiot. I couldn't figure this out. And it's like, that's what Jeff's like all the time. It's true. <laughs> this is what it's like. <laughs> that, being said, Jeff's world. that being said, when I played Fallout and they taught me about that, I paid attention Do you and know, learned. You know what I did? I actually killed the, there's some like roach tutorial and I killed, mm-hmm. I killed the roach like on the first shot. And so I didn't queue up more than one thing. Mm-hmm. So that's you're saying you're so good and that's why you're stupid. Yeah, I'm better than, I'm better <laughs> than so the good skill level done. that's required to finish the tutorial. I'm better than that. <laughs> that's what I can say that with confidence. <laughs> But the um, that's what I'm thinking about Mass Effect. I think there's something fundamental about Mass Effect that I don't understand how it's played. But once again, we're talking about old games, you know. But I, it, I'm only playing it because Mass Effect 2 is about to come when out. When does Mass Effect 2 come out? Is it October? Does I, it come out know, this year? I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. A very cool thing about Mass Effect 2 is that the lead of cinematics was, is a guy who was very big in the machinima world. He's still big, but you know he's obviously got a full-time job doing uh, cinematics for Bioware now. Uh, Paul Marino, a guy who was very helpful to us in our early days of Machinima. He ran the Academy of Machinima Arts and Sciences. Yep. If you're friends with him, you can call him Pimo. 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 And he lives in Austin now. Not that we ever see him because he works like 22 hours a day on Mass Effect. Yeah, if, you, if you follow him on Twitter, his, 
his his Twitters are constantly at work. Like I swear, he must get to work at four a.m. and then leave work at two a.m. Yep. Yeah, man. People people who make video games, they work very 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 hard, very hard. Yeah, it, no doubt. And he's always like rendering or doing software. You know, waiting for software or doing something. And yeah, it's it's insane the amount of work. Uh, one thing I'm hoping that'll happen is, you know, video game revenues start to climb is that they will just expand the number of people who work on these games. You know what? I read yesterday um, that, oh, fuck, I, I'm, I'm going to say this without citing an exact source, but someone from EA was talking about how much more it costs to make games these days. And he said that nowadays the marketing budget for a game can be triple the production budget. Is that true? Yes. Wow. Wow. That's not good. Yeah, that's not good. That's unfucking believable. I'll, I'll, I'll find the name and do an appropriate um, you know, citation when I link, get in the link dump. Well, you know, I mean, marketing makes a huge difference, especially in games. But we were talking about, um, earlier this week, we were talking about this movie Delgo that came out. And apparently the people that, are, that made Delgo, which is some animated movie that came out in like 90, or excuse me, 2005 or four or something like that. They're going to sue Avatar because they feel it looks too similar. And then we can post some screenshots that somebody put together mm-hmm. of, of shots from the Avatar trailer that are, look like they're right out of Delgo. And they're really just shots that could be in any movie you've ever seen. I mean, right. yeah, yeah. You've got, you got an you got 90 minutes of shots. You can make anything look similar, right? Well, they are using the trailer from Avatar. They're using yeah. sampling. but um, Yeah, but they haven't seen the movie. They don't know. Yeah. Right. And they say, well, how can you, how can you possibly sue? It's like, you know, these are standard shots. And yeah, it looks a little bit similar. The reason they can sue is that when they made Delgo, they spent forty million dollars on it, and they made in theaters they made something like four hundred thousand dollars back in in ticket sales. I never even heard of that movie. Yeah, uh, it's there. I mean, it's a movie that came out, and and it's got. I think it's got the record for losing the most amount of money for the number of theaters that it opened in. It was well over two thousand theaters that it opened, and it had a pretty big cast too, right? Yeah, like Freddie Prinze Jr. And hmm. it's like if you've if you've lost forty million dollars on a project, you'll sue anybody you can. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, when you invest in a movie, you think, well, we'll get back fifty percent of our money, maybe, or ten percent of our money, perhaps. They lost forty. They lo- they lost all their money. They. I mean, if you if you only make back a couple hundred thousand dollars on forty million dollars, you've lost all your money. Yeah, and do they you, made one percent back. Do you think that that movie even went to DVD, or I'm at sh- that point where they're like? It's a good question. Where are they going to get the money to put yeah. it on DVD? Like, why how? sink any more cash into something that nobody's going to look how at? How does that happen? How can a movie make so little money? It, it must be marketing. Marketing. No, 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 nobody yeah. knew about it, right? I'd never yeah. heard of it. You've never, heard, never of heard of it. it. Yeah. It was a $40 million movie. A 40 it's million more, more than District 9. Yeah, and fuck if we... And in District 9, I've seen everywhere the marketing yeah. for it, you know? So that's what I was getting at. I said marketing becomes so important. Okay, here it is. Uh, Delgo <clears throat> released... It says December 12, 2008. I'm sorry, 2008. What? It's what? even more recent. <laughs> um, it was a forty million dollar production budget. This is all according to BoxOfficeMojo.com. dot com, and it made six hundred and ninety four thousand dollars. Christ! Uh, how many how many theaters did it open in? Two thousand one hundred and sixty theaters. Oh, oh my god! That's a pretty big fucking release. So it made like eight cents a theater. So did they just literally put it in the movie theaters and then say, "Well, that's it." It, made, <laughs> it made a two hundred and thirty seven dollar average per theater. Oh, oh god! I mean, you can do the quick math on that. Divide that by eight. It's how like forty people per theater per weekend? How long was it in theaters? That's like two for? people for screening. What? How long was it in theaters for? I can't imagine long. I mean, that's a a two thousand theater release. They're dropping it out of stuff fast. Yeah, you know, Box Office Mojo only has one weekend worth of data. Man, that's. God damn! You wonder, like, whoever the producer was of that film, he he did he commit suicide after that? I mean, I, that, who knows? Who I mean, who knows? Like, at what point forty you million not... dollars and you threw it in a fucking lake? Right. I mean, you can God. you can get into things where you say the theatrical release is nothing more than a promotion for the DVD release. Sure, those are not two thousand theater releases. Those okay. are like one hundred and fifty <clears throat> theater releases. Okay, let's think conspiracy theory angle now. Now that I know that that movie didn't come out till December two thousand eight, is it possible? Someone was working on the Avatar movie and thought, "I'll just take, I'll just take forty million dollars. We'll make this movie. We won't promote it. We'll just put it out there. It'll be like Avatar. Then when Avatar comes out, we'll sue them and we'll make more than we could have made <laughs> in, in a theatrical run." I have no idea. Let's, I don't think you'd be casting. Listen to this: Lauren Bacall, Freddie Prinze Jr., and Val Kilmer. Wow, are in that movie. God, man, that's, that's crazy. Oh, sorry. I don't know. I said Lauren Bacall. What's wrong with me? And Bancroft. I don't know why I said Lauren Bacall. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah, it's nuts. 
Who's, who's Anne Bancroft? Uh, Anne Bancroft. She was in. She was in Delgo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anne Bancroft. I'll look it up for you. But I'm saying you're not going to go out and cast name people to do stuff like that. And I look it up on IMDb now too. But you know, marketing's a big deal. So what I'm hoping for is that as games grow and games make a ton more money, the, they can add in more people. And God forbid, have games come out faster. You know, I like that Left 4 Dead 2 is coming out already. I yeah. know a lot of people are complaining about that. It's crazy that com- people are complaining about that. Yeah, I'm I still happy. don't understand that at all, dude. But oh. while, while we're on the subject of um, movie well, hopefully stuff, hopefully we get to play that at PAX. Oh, you know what else <laughs> yeah. I think we're going to get to play? Assassin's Creed 2 and maybe Modern Warfare 2. Those are both going to oh, yeah, be there. I'm excited about Assassin's Creed 2. I love that game. Yeah, Assassin's Creed. Was Even all game. that collecting stuff, I did it all. Hell yeah, dude! Mm. It was great. It was awesome. But what, which movie spent the most amount of money on marketing? Is that a stat that pe- that we know? Like it, a lot, a lot like, of times they hide it. Yeah, we we just read something about that. What was it? Harry Potter? Well, I don't. The, I don't read anything. Fuck. I I can't read. Anne Bancroft. You know her best as Mrs. Robinson from The Graduate. That's oh. why you recognize the name probably. Look up the production. She's dead, right? Can you look up <laughs> no, the? Okay. Dead. Can you look up the new Harry Potter movie on Box Office Mojo, Bernie? I seem to remember something about Harry Potter costing like close to a billion dollars between the money they spent on it and the, uh, the production and then advertising. And. Why do you need to advertise the new Harry Potter movie? Like Dude, number six, I don't know. people aren't going to watch number six. I haven't you know? seen it yet. Really? Yeah, I want to. I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. I just haven't had the time. You know, it's a big deal with a lot of contracts. Is that marketing money is a big, big deal? Yeah. But Harry, but Harry Potter also it's made. I think it's made 300 million in the U.S. and then like another 800 million overseas. A lot of it is so self serving though. Too, you will never see any more movie billboards than you will in Los Angeles. Yep. Every other billboard in Los Angeles is is based is a movie. Yeah, the first time I went to LA, I was shocked. I, I never thought about that until I went there for the first time. You know, ten years ago, whenever it was, it every billboard. You're not kidding. Yep. I, I remember at the time I went, Moulin Rouge was about to open. Every fucking billboard was a Moulin Rouge billboard. Yeah, yeah. You will see movies advertised in Los Angeles that you don't even know existed until yeah. you were, showed up there. Movies and TV shows and. God knows what else. Yeah, and that's so self-serving. They want to see their own billboards up. You know, yeah, they, they want to see their own billboards, and they want their competition to see the billboards. And can we do a quick analysis on numbers, real quick? Sure. Okay. Shadow Complex sold two hundred thousand copies. Yeah, and we figured out that it's fifteen bucks a pop, so that's three million dollars. Three million dollars in total, not counting like a royalty cut or whatever. It's just gross. I think the rumor is that that for video games there they get about two thirds back from so, supposedly. Yeah. So then they would they the developer would have got two million on that. Two million dollars. That's a very complex game. Do you think $2 million is enough to support that game? I mean, if it's the biggest hit there is on Xbox Live Arcade single player released who, who in knows? the summer, it, whatever it is. It, I think it, well, it's impossible to say without knowing more about the studio. Like, do we know if it was like five dudes working on it or, you know, is it a big company? Yeah. We've looked but before. It's Chair, right? Right. I don't really now, know is about Chair that. an offshoot of Epic? I don't know. Or did they did they license the engine from Epic? Because that's a big the, price tag. The right engine there. is definitely it's definitely using the Unreal Engine. I know that, but are they are they part of Epic and therefore right. get it as know. part of their deal, or are they licensing it from Epic? I don't know. Because we, I mean, we've talked to people before about licensing different engines, which is a very common thing in video games to license out the engine. But we've talked about it for Machinima, and those price tags on those engines are big, mm-hmm. big, big, big. You know, I read uh, an interview with John Carmack recently where he was talking about how he's glad that. The Unreal Engine is the now is now like the the standard uh, FPS engine, yeah. and it's not the Quake engine anymore because he said he hated having to support the engine. He said like back then they would sell the Quake engine to someone, and they didn't have you know it was a, it's a small company they didn't have the the, the the infrastructure to support the engine after the sale. So they said that they would sell someone the engine, and they said okay when you buy the engine you get to come and talk to John Carmack for two hours. That's your support. Wow, really? really? Yeah, and then they would the, their engineers would come and sit down. They'd have to you know hammer out all their issues. They're like, okay, that's it. You know, good luck with your game. Wow. wow. You know, I I find that statement to be a little odd too. That he's happy about it because hasn't the impression always been that ID makes their own games as nothing more than a showcase for what the engine is capable of doing, so that they can then license the engine? I had heard that before. Yeah, like Doom Doom Three got a lot of criticism for that, didn't it? Was that it was the the game was just not really. As good as it could be, they were just interested in making a new version of the engine to license to other video game developers. I don't know. I mean, that's just, you know, random people talking shit on the internet. But, I mean, that's what I had always heard about id. Yep. Hmm. Interesting. Did you ever look up Harry Potter? I'm interested to see. I mean, I don't, I don't know where to look up marketing budgets, man. Box Office Mojo sometimes. Yeah, it, it doesn't. It doesn't a lot of times, though. Yeah. Have marketing budgets? It'll have, like, production budget versus advertising budget. All right. Let me see. I'll look this up right now. Boxofficemojo.com. 
Are or, they part of IMDb yet? Why don't they integrate like, these two sites? Yeah, they got purchased. Yeah, they did. All the cool kids call it Bomojo, by the way. Bomojo. You, you sound stupid saying box office mojo. <laughs> oh, do I? B O mojo? Is yeah. that what people all the, say? Bomojo. All the cool kids being Gus and I. <laughs> Bo, Bomojo? All right, what is this? I never watch Harry Potter. Just Half Blood Prince? Is this yeah, the one? Half Blood Prince. It says production budget was $250 million, and it's made $895 million worldwide. Wow. So that's a profit? Let me check my math on that. <laughs> Carry the yeah. zero. I, I You're so, so proud of your ignorance of Harry Potter. I'm not proud of my ignorance of Harry Potter. I just haven't seen it ever, ever, and I don't know anything you, about you it. Like, you, like to, <laughs> <laughs> you like to boast that fact. It's like, I do. I, I if, if anyone's talking about Harry Potter, you'll just like get up and be like, hey, I don't know anything about it. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a kid wizard, you know? I mean, call me I mean, crazy. I'm with you. I don't, I'm, I'm not into either. He's a British kid wizard. No offense. I know you're a Till, wizard. Yeah. What would you call Luke Skywalker? What's that? <laughs> I call like... him fucking badass. Thanks for asking. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think would win in a fight? Harry Potter or Luke Skywalker? I don't know. They, would, <laughs> they moving, would fight. Moving <laughs> right along. They wouldn't fight because Harry Potter would cry and say, my parents got me in this situation. It's not my fault. <laughs> Isn't that what he does? All right. Do we have anything else to talk about before we wrap up today? Well, let's uh, talk about something interesting so we can have something to put in this fucking podcast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gavin and Ben and I watched The Burbs last night. They had never heard of it. It was awesome. It's a little before their time. We're on yeah. a little uh, Tom Hanks spree. You know, I never knew Tom Hanks was a comedic actor. I've only ever seen him do serious stuff. Should, I never knew he was in a comedy. Him, like Bachelor Party. We're going to watch Money Pit next, I think. That's another great one. We watched uh, Splash as well. That was good. The outtakes from Saving Private Ryan are pretty fucking funny. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen them or not. That was, that was filmed in my town. Now, very few actors can make that switch, and I guess Tom Hanks has just completely made the switch. He hasn't done yeah. any kind of comedies at all. When uh, recently, no. Uh, well, uh, we Forrest Gump, I guess. <laughs> would you, you and I went and saw Castaway. Yes, and that, <laughs> not a comedy. That was when I think I reached my limit of dealing with audiences in the movie theater. I was ready. To eat. I was ready to start throwing punches. A Why? Times. What was going on? Well, have you seen the movie Castaway? Uh, I've seen bits of it. I'm gonna I'm gonna ruin one of the bits then. I've seen him if you knock his seen tooth it. out with a with yeah. Why? Well, that's a good one. Skate. When he knocks his tooth out with the ice skate, Bam. not not funny, right? It was pretty funny. No, it wasn't funny. Oh, is that not gonna be funny? But the row in front of us thought it was funny. They thought it was hilarious. Everyone in the theater thought that was funny. And like when he loses Wilson the volleyball, I was in the, in, tearing up in the water, and he's screaming for Wilson to come back. Everyone was cracking up. There's Everybody a- in the movie theater <laughs> thought that was just the high comedy. The guy <laughs> literally sat sitting right in front of us was going. <laughs> 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 he lost the ball. <laughs> he thinks the volleyball is a person. <laughs> yeah, it was Sad. pretty bad. That was pretty bad. <coughs> I saw a funny movie, though, this weekend. What did you say? I saw Mystery Team by Derek Conner. Oh, right. And that was fucking funny. It was, uh, you know, it's a movie that they made. They stopped making YouTube videos, like, in 2008. And it must be really weird to go from making an internet video where you make it, put it online, you get instant feedback, to go into that feature film production mode because they shot it in March of 2008, spring of 2008, somewhere around there. Like which, three months before we started Reconstruction. Exactly. Yeah. So did they just disappear from the face of the internet? And th- were they just like, be right back, we're doing a movie? Well, you and- know, I mean, people are still watching their videos, you know. I mean, I, I don't know how people are keeping up with... Not everyone releases stuff on a weekly basis. That's not their MO. You know, some people just put out like one thing a month anyway. Mm. That's such a long cycle, though. I can't imagine. I mean, we're so used to the instant feedback and like making something and having it up that day. I can't fathom like... Even like, even DVD production, which takes us about four weeks, five weeks, feels right. unbearably long to me. Well, I mean, even Red vs. Blue, which is essentially we make like a movie a year. Yeah. We get feedback in five-minute chunks, you know? It's not like we're working on something behind closed doors for nine months at a time or a year at a time and saying, boy, I really hope we're heading in the right direction with this yeah, thing. Yeah, I hope this is... <laughs> is this funny? I can't remember anymore. We, <laughs> we did this part eight months ago. Yeah, yeah. it was funny when we wrote it, you know. Maybe we should take out all those references to Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the juggernaut, bitch. Just isn't as funny as it used to be. <laughs> uh, but it was great. Derek, uh, Mystery Team's great. I don't know what kind of release it's going to get. They're doing but, like uh, a college tour kind of thing, right? That's the smart thing to do, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. So I think they're. if you live in a big college town, chances are it'll end up in your local theater. It's uh, If you liked Super Troopers by Broken Lizard, I think the people who liked Super Troopers will like this, you know. And I, I was a fan of Derek Comedy already, mm-hmm. so I went in as a fan, and uh, I had a great time. It's also hard not to like a movie at the Alamo Draft House. It's usually such it's a true. good environment, True. You know? Yeah, I saw it at the Alamo, which is badass theater. That's literally a block away from us. Yeah. They're making a bowling alley, those Alamo guys. Are they really? Mm-hmm. They're making a bowling alley down on South Lamar. Is where- it Alley Moe's? I don't know. Is that what it's... They have those shirts. They have those shirts. That's yeah. what I think it's called Highball. Huh. 
highball bowling lanes, and it's like, you know, the, it's cool because you get to eat dinner while you watch a movie, but the coolest thing about it is these guys know how to program a theater. Yeah. They get the uh, it just awesome movies. Like, you can't see Mystery Team anywhere else in the United States right now, but you can see it at the Alamo. Yeah, it's you know. pretty awesome. The, and, wor- the world premiere of uh, the new Star Trek movie was at the Alamo. Austin gets a lot of really cool premieres because of the Alamo. And then, I mean, and they go out of their way to do really cool stuff. Like, even when they just had opening night for Iron Man, they had a dude in the parking lot flying around on a jetpack. That they that hired. was so much fun. It was loud, dude. It was loud. It was fucking terrifying. What do you mean flying around it? What? Like a, we, what? They had a dude come out with a fucking real-life jetpack, dude, and he was dressed up like Iron Man. Horrible costume. Horrible so costume. Great. And he flew from like one end of the parking lot to the other, and it sounded like a jet was taken off. Well, so it was a real jetpack. Yeah. 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 It was like compressed yeah. air or something. He can, fly for like, he can fly for like 15 seconds at a time. <laughs> and then remember awesome. when Transformers came out, they hired the big Truckosaurus? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They closed off the parking lot, got Truckosaurus come and like demolish a car. Yeah. And they, did, they have like David Lynch marathons where in between the movies they have midgets come out and dance and wrestle each other <laughs> and stuff. Just like really absurd stuff like they that. They just do something fun for every movie. Like you could go like on any given night you could watch The Jerk and they'll serve you pizza in a cup. Like it doesn't have to yeah. be like the biggest thing in the world, but it'll be something cool and referential to the film that'll make sense. Like when they show Blue Velvet, they have free Paps Blue Ribbon for everybody. Yeah. When, yeah. I, when I saw Shaft there, everyone got a, a 40 of Old English. Yeah. Bag, the door. right? Yeah. Yeah. And then they had uh, then when they did... Um, What's the Steve Zizu movie? Oh, Life, Life Aquatic. Aquatic. Life Aquatic. And they gave everyone a red toque. And so everyone in the audience is wearing a red hat in the picture. <laughs> yeah. like, like they're part of... I, I can see myself in that picture. If we, if we ever go together, I'll, I'll point out where I am. Did you guys see that there together? I, I didn't go that time. I didn't go. He, well, I, oh, you I, went? Went, I went on my own. Oh, man. You saw a I'm movie jealous. on your own? Yeah. Oh. Hey, what, does Wes Anderson have a movie coming out anytime soon? Uh, Fabulous Mr. Fox that he and... Yeah. Uh, oh, right. It's a cartoon, right? And it's him and that other... The dude that wrote Squid and the Whale, Noah Bomba. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's a good movie. Man. <laughs> a, yeah, it's yeah, a different it, kind of movie. It's, it's a, a good, good movie. movie. It's a good movie, yeah. man. If you want to watch the like textbook failure of an American relationship. Yeah, family, it's pretty yeah. cool, man. It's pretty cool. It was a good Jeff movie, Daniels though. is a good actor. I mean, he's, he's done some really cool stuff in the last few years. Um, Dumb and Dumber comes to mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I know. That's what you think movie. of, right? No, yeah, no. I, I do think awesome. he's, a, he's a great actor, yeah. The uh, arachnophobia. That's obscure. You know what he was really good in terms of endearment? I don't know if you guys ever saw that. I didn't know he was in that. Yeah, my mom made me watch that movie like a thousand times when I was a kid. Yeah, that's a, that was like that was like I think when I was just kind of reaching the point where I realized the Oscars were something cool, but they weren't necessarily movies you wanted to watch. Yeah, and that's when I remember that coming out. Can I say this? Where the wild things are is coming out, mm-hmm. and Spike Jones is probably one of the best guys to get that movie and direct it. Yeah. There's part of me that wishes that had ended up in the hands of Wes Anderson. I, I like Wes Anderson's like childlike wonderment stuff, I think, a little bit better than Spike Jones. There's a bigger part of me that wishes that movie wasn't made. Really? Why is that? It's a, like a 15-page children's book. So? I, I, I don't see how it's going to translate into you know a 90-minute feature. Yeah, they'll make a cool story out of it. We'll see. I mean, <laughs> why not make an original story about an island filled with monsters? Why take a 15 page fucking book? I don't know. Maybe he had a good web agent. <laughs> <laughs> it's Spike Jones. It'll be good. It'll be fun. I, got, I, I do got. agree with your Wes Anderson thing, though. That guy's, that guy's got such a unique aesthetic that's like, I don't know. It's really yeah. cool to watch. Like, did you guys ever see uh, Darjeeling Limited? Nope. Nope. Man, you should see that movie. Didn't do well. Critical failure, but just gorgeous. And it's just like, he just does whatever that is he does so well. It's really fun to watch. I watched uh, Hotel Chevalier to see Natalie Portman make it. <laughs> Hotel Chevalier, it. I wasn't that impressed. How did that, that work out for you? Disappointing. Yeah. There was something I saw recently where Mr. Skin put out the top 100 nude celebrities, or new, top 100 nude scenes of all time. What, from movies? What was number one? Yeah. Uh, was uh, the Fast Times original high Phoebe Cates Phoebe Cates that, yeah. yeah and then number two was something I think it was like the Jessica Biel in that, that stripper movie she just did oh really but yeah but I I gotta how does Mr. Skin stay in business how does he do how does that site do that how can they take clips from movies and put them on their website and sell access to them and they've been doing this for now 10 years 12 years yeah unbelievable I, I read about it somewhere um, a couple years ago, and I, it's the answer is, like, it's really just, like, he doesn't have the right to do it, but nobody's stopping him, right? Yeah, and they send him clips. They send him clips because it's, they see it as good promotion, I guess, right? That's, that's 
something. Yeah, wasn't he what, on Stern? Didn't he talk about it on Stern? Yeah, it's yeah. one of those things. It's probably one of those things where he started doing it long enough ago that he just be, kind of became entrenched in the internet, and it was before people started to realize this kind of stuff, and he just got grandfathered in, you know? You probably couldn't start a site like Mr. Skin right now. There's no such thing as grandfathered in. I don't in. know. I don't know. <laughs> what does that mean? It's like, well, they killed him. Well, he's already been doing ago. it. He's been doing it for so long. He's so successful. Nobody sued him yet. Why, why stir the pot? I guess so. I you mean, know? I guess. I mean, if, unless everyone's going to do it all at once. Here, this is this is bad. Number 100 on the list was Christina Ricci in Black Snake Moan. I would have put that probably I've still never seen that. I saw that at the draft house. I got so drunk. I saw that at the draft house, too. It was part of that 24-hour film festival. I got so drunk. There's a really cool film <laughs> so festival drunk. that the Ain't It Cool News guys put on like once a year at the Alamo where you go and literally sit in a seat for 24 hours straight. Fuck yeah. that. Is that. Is that fun? The first eight hours are. Yeah? And then it's like, <laughs> oh. I've, always, I've, I've wanted to go. Uh, I, I just n- never do, but... I hear that they have movies to try to make you go to sleep in the middle of the night. Okay, I, I agree with number two. I'm gonna go down this list real quick. So okay, yeah, let's let's hear the top ten. You've reached the pervy part of the podcast. Okay, top ten. Puff cost. Anne Hathaway and Havoc. I've seen that. I've never seen it. Okay, number that's number ten. Anne Hathaway's hot. Yeah, Alyssa Milano in Embrace the Vampire. Absolutely, I've seen clips from that. But e- Eva Green. In the Dreamers, don't know what that is. Wait, whoa, whoa. Uh, no, no, yeah, dude, that's a hot. I've seen that movie. She's fucking awesome in that film. Oh yeah, yeah, that's worth seeing. She looks hot in the picture. Yeah, she's, she's like a curv- curvy, dark hair chick. See, it looks like an old like period piece. Yeah, it, t- it takes place in France in like the fifties or sixties during those. There was like those French riots about college or some shit. That's what that I, movie's th- about. I thought we were talking about <laughs> boobs. Why are we talking about <laughs> French anyway. college riots? And then she fucks a lot in it. I- I, if I was going to replace that with something else, I would have done probably Uma Thurman in Dangerous Liaisons. Also hot, but you should see that movie for, All right. for you. Holly okay. Berry in Swordfish? Uh, never never saw it. Kelly Preston in Mischief. Kelly Preston's gorgeous. Never man. saw it. She's absolutely gorgeous. Mercy Tomei in Before the Devil Knows You're Dead? Never saw it. Never saw it either. Jessica Biel, Powder Blue, we're at number four. Never saw now. it. Jessica Biel. Number three is Sharon Stone in Basic Instinct. That's like the whole movie. Yeah. Uh, number two. Angelina Jolie and Gia. Oh, fuck yeah. Which, if you've never seen Gia, is an awesome movie. And I've come to find out, the other hot naked girl in that is the chick from Lost. Yeah, dude. How awesome is that? Which, which, which chick, chick from, from Lost? Lost? Juliet. Juliet. <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah. I'm watching that movie tonight. <laughs> that's like, that's just like, that's just like the huge tit makeout movie. Jesus. Whoa. I'm, man, I've got a boner. And then, <laughs> <laughs> number one that's is a... Phoebe Cates in Fast House Original. High. Which now, is a, just, it's a great scene. Just so we're not complete pigs. And to give something for the female members of the audience. Gavin, you want to say dirty again one more time? I'm not going to do it. Rewind. <laughs> you have to do it. Rewind to... I wonder it. what the best male nude scene of all time is. So, let's... Uh, no, no, no. Let's, let's let's have a little equality here. I would say probably if you're going to... Not Jason Siegel and fucking... Forgetting Sarah, Sarah Marshall. Marshall. That would, was a lot of unexpected I would imagine movie. that women really like those Ocean's Eleven movies. So, a, somebody's going to see those. There's no dicks in those, though, are there? Well, they're, I don't think women when, are all wanting to see new dicks I don't and stuff. know about that. Probably not. Dicks what are kind of gross. What about, about um, Dr. Manhattan? Probably, uh, oh, there you go. Yeah, Dr. Or, Manhattan uh, didn't get a big, like, there weren't a bunch of women going back. Bruce go Willis showed his wiener in The uh, Color of Night. Oh, he did? Yeah. What Whoa. about uh, Boogie Nights? It? Boogie Nights, yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> How about Harvey Keitel and Bad Lieutenant? Oh, 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 <laughs> not that one. Good. There was a, a or, uh, spot the... of penis in 28 Days Later, right well, at the beginning. About the Simpsons movie. Simpsons movie, Bart's w- dick. What about, uh, yeah. what was the Brokeback Mountain? Those dudes were naked, right? Yeah, see, that's not driving that stuff, I don't think. You know what I yeah. mean? I, I think, like, when I think of, like, women, like, what the equivalent of, like, women porn is, is, I think, like, Titanic. I was thinking sure. checkbooks. <laughs> And credit cards. <laughs> Take it easy. Take Whoa. it easy. We're trying a little balance, and here you Trouble are. at home, Gus. Going crazy. <laughs> All right, we gotta we gotta cut this. We're like at an hour and a half. Three hundred would probably be a big one. Three hundred. There you go. Even my wife was into that. My I, wife, I yeah. would bet. Yeah. Hey, Gus. I sneezed earlier, and it didn't smell of anything. Did it? I sneezed. Uh, we we had this discussion. We have to bring this up now. I'm trying to end the podcast. Why are you trying to end the podcast? Because we're at an hour. And Why don't you cut all the boring okay. shit in the middle and <laughs> make it up? Okay. Well, this is me talking. I'll cut something you said earlier then. Okay. So I can fit this in. You can cut the bit where I said dirty. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit! I said it again. <laughs> uh, so we were talking God, here in the office. Swallow. How do you Sorry, swallow man. that fucking loud? How I, do you do it? I always get mad at him for that. So none, you, so none of you guys have stinky sneezes. Am I the only one who has stinky <laughs> no, sneezes? No, dude. No, we, no such we, thing. Should I preface how this came up? <laughs> yes, please. Okay. I like to find weird-ass stuff on the internet. Like, weird medical stuff is something I like to find. Like, weird, like, chiropractic adjustments. Yeah, that's like, like your, that. everybody has one weird thing. That's your weird thing. I like to find weird medical stuff. 
like tonsil stones and weird crap. Throw rocks. <laughs> I, came, so I came across this community of people on the internet. They were like on some Yahoo group where they're concerned because they have stinky, sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh. This is this is serious. You almost did not be laughing. They were concerned because they have stinky sneezes. And this is like a weird offshoot of like the Morgellons group. There's this weird thing called Morgellons where people think that they have a parasite that makes fibers all over their body. I'm fascinated by these Whoa. people. I'm, I'm absolutely fascinated by them. And somehow through them I found the stinky sneezes people. They think that because their sneezes <laughs> smell, they have a stinky smell to them, that they're being invaded by some kind of like fungus. That, <laughs> and they think they're contagious. I brought this up in conversation and Gus said... I have stinky sneezes. Uh, yeah, you, you all have never smelled them, but I do have stinky sneezes. I have. Sneezes. I've smelled your you stinky sneezes. You just smelled it once. And I, ha- I, I had a stinky sneeze I, I, right before I went to your house last night. But anyway, <laughs> not all my sneezes are stinky, but only sometimes are they stinky. How can a sneeze smell? It makes and, no sense. So, and usually, it's, it'll, if it's going to be stinky, the chances are greater it'll be stinky in the morning versus later in the day. Are we talking like... But it can happen later in the day because it happened right before I went to Jeff's house at 8 Dude, last night. I'm going to tell you one time. This is like nine years ago. Gus and I were driving to a store to pick something up for work. Yeah, this is the first time I was ever... By the way, that we, time, this story, that was the first time I was ever aware that my sneeze oh, really? stank. We were driving and we had to turn around in a parking lot and something happened and it smelled so bad that we both thought we hit a bloated dead animal and we couldn't get the stink <laughs> off the car. And I, we, we were like... We were like... It was so bad and it lasted so long... We were talking about, like, do we get a car wash? How do we get rid of this dead animal? I then find, and I remembered it was so and, bad. And, and at one point, I turned to you. When this was going on, remember, I said, was that me? I said, I was like, that, I was like did that smell come out of me when I sneezed? And, like, and then Gus admitted to me a couple weeks ago that it was his stinky sneeze and that he just let me think it was a dead animal all these years. Well, at the time, I didn't know it was my sneeze. That was the first time I'd ever had a stinky sneeze. But it was really, it was special bad. Yeah, and like, then my wife never had stinky sneezes. And now she does. So she caught them off you. Yeah. I love the fact that you can sneeze, but you don't smell it on the way out. No, I don't smell it, but because the second I'm done sneezing, oh, it's every, I, I smell it. Because that's why I asked you. World? So it's, is it something like, uh, what could it be? I don't know. I, I'm, like, I, 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 I'm not, I've never read anything about it on the internet. But it's going to be bacterial. It was like something, yeah, bacteria like up in my kill. sinuses. Because that's why I asked you if, whether you sneeze through your nose or mouth. Because if you sneeze through your nose, surely you'd smell it as it came out. Yeah, I sneeze through my mouth. Yeah. My nose isn't even my huge nose isn't big enough to accommodate this, my <laughs> gust style sneezes. Well, now a big thing that I like to read is like the conspiracy stuff where people think there's something being hidden from them, and these people are these people in this community are great because they say I talked to my doctor about it and they refuse to recognize it. And they just I see doctors and nurses talking and like saying no, no, shaking their heads that this couldn't possibly <laughs> be true. Is this what you have experienced in the medical I, community? I, I've never talked to a doctor about it, but after we talked, I did some searching online for it and. There's people who are constantly posting, like, I'm a doctor, I'm a nurse, this is impossible, this can't be happening, this is in your imagination, it's not. Which is why you should sneeze into a bag and open it in front of a doctor's face. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll sneeze for you guys one of these days. <laughs> if, I ever, if I have a stinky sneeze, I'll call you over to my desk. Dude, I'm I, not coming over. I, wanna, I don't want it. Let me know so I can take a break and go outside for a while. <laughs> well, if you, if you, you smell you, it, you've got it. You fart no. without warning. So, <laughs> what fucked. is this bodily function podcast? Hey, let me read you Morgellons real quick so you get a All feel right, for this like, crazy stuff I love to find. Morgellons, also called Morgellons disease or more, maybe it's Morgellon, Morgellon syndrome, is a name given in 2002 by Maria Leteto to a proposed condition characterized by a range of cutaneous skin symptoms, including crawling, biting, and stinging sensations, finding fibers on or under the skin, and persistent skin lesions. If you're, by the way, a hypochondriac, do not read this stuff because you'll go crazy. Um, and it's people who, like, find these black, like, they say they're almost like metal fibers growing out of their body. What? what? Yeah. And they, they find them, and they freak out. They, they that would freak be out. awesome. It's, I think, listen, if you're suffering from this, I, I, you should see a doctor, absolutely. But it's, I, I, I collect I, I up. think the accepted opinion is that it's a mental condition and not a uh, physical Lord. condition. Good Lord. That's, wow, really disturbing. But people are, there's whole websites dedicated to Are there any pictures this. of people who have scraped bits of metal off their skin? All over YouTube. All over. There's pictures. I'd, and there's I'd videos. collect that shit up out of the bottom of the shower and I'd sell it. It must be valuable. Recycling, <laughs> aluminum, <There's> conspiracy, <laughs> conspiracy theories. Here's some self-identified, self-identified. Morgellon suffers, and conspiracy theorists provide their own origin hypothesis. Perhaps it is caused by chemical spills or even alien abductions. 
on a radio program called Coast to Coast. <laughs> Art Bell? <laughs> okay, stop me when it sounds weird. <laughs> Popular among people who live, uh, who believe in UFOs and ghosts, a New Mexico doctor reports that a former CIA agent told him the disease was caused by the French. <laughs> a botched government experiment, he says, contaminated the water. All Evian drinkers are at risk. <laughs> Which, by the oh. way, I don't want to lose our Evian endorsement. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's probably, that, that might be unsubstantiated. You know who drinks a lot of Evian. Evian goes so well in my Maybach. Ben. <laughs> it's going to happen to you, buddy. What? You're at risk. You're going to get metal fibers growing. Yeah. Really. Okay. Sweet. Anything else before we wrap up? I don't think so. Come check us out at PAX. Yeah, check us out at PAX. We've got three new videos to show at PAX. Come see us. Buy some shit. Bring this podcast by the booth. We'll sign it. Gus wants a hug. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening, everyone. Ta-ta. Yeah. Bye. Bye.